Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Deal Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for end of day's trading session, the 26th of May 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can download the Google Play and the Apple App Store and from the Apple App Store as well. Okay, now let's look at the actual for end of day stats for the European session of the FTSE finishing up 30 points. That's mainly led by the uh, weaker sterling as the uh, gap certainly narrows between Corbyn and May. Now I'll certainly declare my bias, um, given the fact that I've reviewed both now over the last six months or so, possibly even before. Uh, I was uh, initially a, a Tory supporter, I'll certainly declare that, especially when Mr Cameron was on board and the austerity measures certainly needed to uh, certainly be uh, be uh, upheld. Uh, also, uh, obviously, given the fact that you had the uh, Labour Party in disarray, no real leader of any substance, and uh, really the Tory parties certainly had it together uh, in terms of organisation and uh, solutions to the uh, country's problems. Now, that's certainly done a full circle now, given the fact that you have mm -hmm. Theresa May, really, who's unelected. Uh, she hasn't been elected as of yet, OK? She's really living off uh, Mr Cameron's legacy, OK? She certainly is attempting to forge her own, although she has been attempting to uh, remain away from the press. I mean, there's been several reports of her only allowing certain individuals in. Uh, she certainly isn't agreeing to any TV debates either. Uh, and she certainly has made a, a series of blunders. Now, you have the National Insurance U-turn blunder. You have the Dementia Tax U-turn blunder, OK? So she certainly has made a series of blunders. and. And uh, the definition of insanity by uh, Mr Einstein was doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And that's exactly what she's attempting to do. She's not offering any substance. She doesn't really offer any value. Uh, even her speeches really are concocted, um, shall we say, incorrectly, really yeah. amateur. Uh, she doesn't really have any flair, any flamboyance, any, any personality as such. Whereas Mr. Corbyn is really on the other side of the spectrum. I mean, he has flair, he has character, he's got grit, he's got determination, his speeches are pretty impressive. I mean, he can certainly sway public opinion, and, and that's certainly evident in the actual polls themselves, certainly narrowing, given the fact that they had a 20-point lead, and now it's narrowed to less than five points. And, and that's just a margin for error. I mean, a margin for error lead, and given the fact that the stats today were saying that's the third highest or strongest lead ever for a Labour Party member. And that's since later, that's uh, since Tony Blair's day. So that's very impressive, very, very impressive. Somebody to come back and close that gap uh, suddenly. And especially his uh, his message resonates with me because his focus is on uh, the two most important things that any country should focus on, really, from my, my perspective, is number one, education, okay? Scrapping of tuition fees, funding schools, okay? Because that's your bedrock of any civilization, okay? is your education. If you can't educate your masses and your citizens, what chance do you have of a proper prosperous society? So, number one. Number two, uh, his argument with regards to uh, uh, the armed forces, the police, uh, NHS staff, okay, so health is obviously one of his, I mean, he can even call it three, really, three arguments, three very powerful arguments, healthcare, and obviously uh, the, uh, the actual um, security of our country. So, so he's certain, given the fact that the Tories have certainly been cutting back on police and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So NHS is a big, is a big, uh, is a big, big one as well. Uh, I've got a few friends, okay, that work uh, uh, for the NHS, and I'm constantly hearing cuts and cutbacks, and and them being deprived of the services that they need in order to cater for the uh, the actual citizens of the UK. So again, very shocking and shambles under the Tory government certainly has has made a blunder there, okay, so nobody's perfect, I mean, like I said, I was voting for Tory before, it's like the market, really, um, you back the uh, strongest horse, okay, so if I'm going to buy a certain stock, or if I'm, I have a position long, then I need to sum those arguments up in order to, obviously, uh, support my trade, and that's exactly what I'm doing now, I'm going long on Corbyn, short on Theresa May. And Theresa May has very uh, made it very easy, I mean, she's been scoring on goals, so... Certainly, from my perspective, I would my analysis of the situation one, two, three, one. Any individual that's supporting education and, and obviously um, rolling the cut, the potentially rolling back the cutbacks. Okay, uh, uh, anybody who is actually uh, attempting to help the NHS and funding more. Okay, and number three, obviously security uh, is paramount now, especially with the Manchester attack. 
and uh, any individual who's trying to cut uh, in terms of the armed forces, especially with regards to Tories, they made a real blunder there. Okay, and uh, the uh, the news release. I mean, one of the things that shocked me today was when I went for a haircut. I was reading the fact that the uh, the fire brigade they had to wait 90 minutes before they were allowed in because the resources weren't available. Okay, so they had to wait. And if you can read this in the, in the newspaper yourself, and Andy Burnham, the uh, the local councillor, has confirmed this as well. They had to wait 90 minutes before they could actually gain access to the actual um, terror terrorist scene. Okay, and the terrorist incident happened at 10:33. God knows when they were allowed in. Okay, so they apparently the the, the fire brigade uh, <clears throat> are certainly are stating, and you can read this as well and have it verified. Uh, they had to wait 90 minutes before they were allowed onto the scene to help the individuals, and that's shocking, right? Okay. That's absolutely shocking, and any government that actually uh, authorises that certainly needs to go, okay? Out with the old, in with the new, and we certainly need to give uh, Labour a, a chance, okay? So from my perspective, I'm voting Labour. You can make up your own mind. I'm just giving my opinion, and I'm justifying it as well, just like we do with trading, okay? If I'm going long on a certain position, if I'm going long on the FTSE, I have to justify it technically and fundamentally, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, back to trading now, folks. Let's uh, In terms of stats, today, like I said, European market's down. Uh, the FTSE really the only one okay the reason why the FTSE was higher today was because oil certainly rebounded if you look at the price of oil here now certainly pushing higher a daily chart certainly is bullish okay bullish engulfing candle and you can see we've been based around the 48.2 we bounced up to 50 dollars now certainly push up to this potential 200 ma at 50.2 and potentially touch 50.6 as well so watch out for that and also sterling sterling certainly has fallen quite drastically given the fact that uh, miss uh, may is no longer uh, leading in the polls, uh, I'm not too sure why they thought the Tory go. Well, I can understand why they thought the Tory government was stronger, good for the sterling. Uh, one, it's more like I mean, number one, it's stability. Obviously, you know who's in power, and obviously you can adjust accordingly. And number two, the <coughs> excuse me, the austerity measures that are implemented by uh, by the Tories really is crippling the economy. And GDP numbers yesterday certainly came in on the weaker side. Every other data front uh, data point certainly is coming on the weaker side, and then that's the last thing you want. The last thing you want is, is austerity in the face of Brexit uncertainty, okay? Uh, number one, you can't have a money, a monetary, monetary tightening, nor can you have fiscal uh, tightening either. So We need a loose fiscal policy and we need a loose monetary policy going into this uh, potential uncertainty period. So Tories certainly haven't got something uh, correct there. And again, the last thing you want now is, uh, is a government that constantly does a U-turn. I mean, the Tory party has become a populist party, really. They, they certainly are going for populist uh, policies, and even then they can't get that right. Okay, so dementia tax U-turn, national insurance U-turn, okay, God knows what else, how many other U-turns they're going to go ahead and do. So it certainly seems like a party that isn't very stable, doesn't really have uh, a democratic state. I mean, even there's been reports of Theresa May only allowing certain individuals within her cabinet and she'd only listen to certain individuals. She's not listening to other individuals. So that certainly isn't positive. Okay, that's very negative. That's very autocratic. And that's what is being said and described uh, of her. So anybody who's autocratic certainly needs to go. Okay, certainly needs to go, from my opinion. We certainly need uh, as many voices uh, that can be heard and that can be exercised. And uh, certainly as many inputs as possible. No one individual has the answer. Okay, collectively we can come to the uh, the better good. Okay, so in terms of the uh, or, um, the price of uh, sterling, you can see 30, 40, and that certainly has helped the FTSE as well. Okay, so the FTSE itself pushing high, as you can see here, FTSE 250 pushing to new highs, and that certainly helped the FTSE 100 push as well. If I bring up the daily chart, you can see that we broke above the uh, key resistance at 7535, close at 7547. So, very, very impressive, okay, to say the least. Right, okay. Uh, in terms of European equities, the reason why they were bearish was due to the fact that uh, you had Mr. Trump co uh, comments with regards to German automakers uh, certainly uh, arguing or certainly complaining. Oh, he's, he's constantly moaning, nothing different. Uh, moaning with regards to German automakers, okay, stating that they have an unfair advantage or general German or the German goods altogether. And that's why you've seen Jim, Miss Merkel talk up the euro uh, prior to Mr. Trump's arrival, okay, saying that the euro is too weak. And uh, certainly, um, uh, we see driving the euro, but that's at the detriment of the rest of the eurozone. Okay, a stronger euro means weaker exports, and obviously, weaker exports hurts the recovery and uh, certainly leads to deflation as well. So, 
the, the European uh, periphery, uh, obviously other than Germany, France, or other than France as well, the rest of the periphery certainly need a weaker euro in order to revive exports and revive growth, etc., etc. Okay, so that's the conundrum there as well. Okay, so you have Mr. Trump arguing, and you can see in terms of automakers, if I can bring up the automakers here, I don't think I have the particular sector, but you can see automakers certainly under pressure, and not given the fact that Mr. Trump said he would, he would block German exports, and that certainly isn't uh, boding well uh, for global trade, and obviously equity markets as such as well. So let's start off with the German DAX. I mean, other than that, economic data-wise for the day, um, today, we had weaker data from Italy, consumer confidence, business data, obviously UK GDP came in on the weaker side as well. US durable goods certainly come in on the weaker side. Uh, obviously UK GDP was yesterday. Uh, let's just quickly look at this for today. Uh, US GDP came in on the weaker side, durable goods. Everything from the US already was weaker today. Okay, so weaker dollar certainly uh, held remain remain supreme. Okay, so that was a situation at present. Okay, right. In terms of the German DAX, let's just look at the actual daily chart. Given the fact that, uh, like I said, uh, Mr. Trump certainly hurt the uh, equity market today and uh, certainly did push back towards the close on the daily chart. Sixty-minute chart certainly pushed lower. Certainly held that pivot low. So keep an eye on that pivot low there. Okay. But from my perspective, the German DAX certainly is under severe pressure. Okay, if Mr. Trump is certainly cutting off the export side of the equation, that doesn't bode well. We did actually get a double bottom bounce towards the close, but we are now into resistance at 12,600. You do have gap fill above, so watch out. So you have gap fill around the 12,620 zone, and that certainly will keep the index at bay as well. Okay, so let's just take the pivot high from here to here. Okay, and you're looking at gap fill at 12,630. Okay. Now, in terms of the uh, the next move or market uh, index itself, let's just look at this. Okay. Uh, we certainly did bounce of gap fill on the euro stocks. Okay, certainly coming into gap fill resistance as well on the euro stocks. So gap fill at five three three seven three three five. Okay, and you have resistance at five three fifty. You've got resistance at 5360 and resistance at 5366 and then you have resistance at 5370 as well so all these zones are certainly acting as resistance and certainly will keep the index at bay in terms of the FTSE 100 looking at the daily chart you've got a breakout above the uh, 7530 zone on the daily charts so are certainly holding bullish certainly impressive okay so take the highs together you certainly have this diagonal trend line so watch out for 7540 7550 on the FTSE 100 on the daily chart so watch out for that diagonal trend line although you do have a breakout so you have to respect that but that breakout really is uh, certainly led by sterling weakness so any reversal in sterling doesn't bode well for the uh, the actual FTSE so it will certainly reverse that move so be, be careful if you are trading the FTSE you must observe sterling okay and also keep an eye on the price of oil as well them two factors certainly do uh, hold sway uh, the uh, retracement back to 7535 obviously previous resistance equals support now so that certainly needs to be respected. You certainly have multiple sort of support zones below at 7500, 7490, and then obviously 7480. So it should be interesting. It should be interesting how the FTSE trades here. Again, a lot of it does obviously uh, depend on how the US equity markets trade. I mean, I did have a position short in the NASDAQ. I've closed that now because the US equity markets have got, gone into zombie mode. Okay, neither hither nor dither. Okay, so again, um, interesting okay interesting scenario let's see what happens obviously we've got bank holiday Monday uh, FTSE back on Tuesday we'll see exactly how the markets responded by yeah. then okay in terms of uh, European equities last but not least let's just quickly go over to European okay so certainly flushing on today on the back of obviously Mr Trump's comments uh, you do have a bottoming tail again just watch out there ever since we put bottoming tail we bounce from there but you certainly have a lower high okay so no higher high you have the unfilled gap that 3440 that is certainly needs to close so bear in mind that that certainly needs to be taken into consideration okay uh, and obviously mr trump's comments as well okay you certainly have had a bounce here uh, led by the german dax but you do excuse me obviously um, this heat at the moment is making you uh, tired so again previous support equals resistance here at uh, 3580 Again, this is a zone to short, and again, 3600. So these are two zones that I'll certainly be happy to short 
the euro stocks okay so that's a status quo at present going into monday's trading session 10 minute chart certainly is ripe for a short here now around the 3580 3585 certainly is looking to move lower okay i think that's a good summation really of european equities please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus goodbye now